Hi. So I ended the last video kind of abruptly and I didn't intend to. Um, I just didn't have my camera on when I was filming the last little bit of the last video. And I thought about coming in here and filming a pickup shot, but I just didn't feel like it. And, you know, one thing leads to another. And I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to put the video up. It's fine. It's kind of funny that I just left ranting about my camera. So, right, we'll move on. But in the last video, we made this piping. And so now that we have this lovely piping to work with, mm, so pretty, so tasty, we can move on to our next video, uh, or to the next step. And the next step is to cut out our squares for our pillow, and then we can sew those together. So I'm going to do that. Normally I would do this on my big cutting table, but I don't have a tripod over there yet to set up so I can film over there. So I kind of have to do it here. That's going to have to change over the progress or over the process of this project because I've got some stuff that I need to do that's going to need a wider kind of angle or a wider kind of screen. So um, for right now, this will be fine because this fits more or less on screen. I can move it around enough, and I think I can fit the fabric up here. I may bump the camera. I apologize if I do. Again, I'm trying to work in a very small space. Like, this is 15 by 15, and you can see it's just kind of barely almost sort of fitting on screen. So not working with a huge space here. All right. But I did unfurl my two yards of fabric. So we have all this lovely, lovely fabric. So I've got my fabric, I've got my measuring tool, and I've got my chalk. So we're going to do like we did last time, we're going to start drawing lines. Now my pillow forms are 16 by 16. Let's see if that's in focus. So my pillow forms are 16 by 16 inches. Um, I just went with this brand because this was kind of the middle of the road brand uh, that my big box store had in stock. Uh, so I went with that one. So we're going to go with this. I think I have eight of them. So I bought like a case. So I think I have eight of them. I'm not sure how many I can get out of this fabric. We'll find out. I don't know yet if I'm going to do them all in this color, if I'm going to do some in a contrasting color. Maybe. But I can get more of this if I need to. They had more of this online. And this was not expensive, so I can get more if I need to. Okay, but for right now, I'm just going to unfurl some of this. I want to line this grid up with the plaid pattern to make it as straight as I can. So I have this square. This square is a 15-inch square, but I want to cut 16-inch squares for my pillows. So I need to increase this by an inch. So I'll show you what I'm going to do to do that. And you have to, because I need seam allowance, I want this to be an inch smaller um, than, my throw, than my pillow itself. And just to verify, oh, told you I'd hit the camera. All right, we're just going to verify that this is actually 16 inches. So starting seam to seam. And it is exactly 16 inches. All right, so I am going to make this 15 inches or uh, 15 inches finished. So with a half inch seam allowance, that means I need to cut the fabric to 16 inches. So, and I'm going to use this square. So I've got the square ruler lined up with this grid, with the grid of the, of the plaid, more or less. It's not going to be exact, but it'll be more or less. And I'm just going to draw this square. And then, once I've got that square drawn, I'm going to grab my long ruler that I used before, and I'm just going to add an inch. So I'm going to line 
this up with that line that I just drew and draw an inch outside that line. And then an inch this way, a little less. Can you see that? Try not to move the fabric around too much because I don't want to pull it out of square. Boop, boop. I'm just going to kind of manipulate this a little bit to get it in square. All right, so now I've got my 16 by 16 inch square. And now what I can do is once I cut this out, I can use this as a pattern for all of my other squares. You know, and I've never watched myself cut before. I cut really slow. <laughs> I was watching the videos I was editing it. I'm a really slow cutter. Some of it is the scissors I was using weren't terribly sharp. Um, let's see if I can find a better pair of scissors. Two big pinking shears. Actually, pinking shears might not be a bad idea. Mm, too lightweight. I think those need to be sharpened. If I remember correctly. Let me keep digging. Maybe more pinking shears. Don't judge me in my scissor problem. Aha. These are the ones I was looking for. So these are gingers, but they're a little bit more lightweight. Gingers tend to be kind of a heavier scissor, so they can kind of fatigue your hand after a while of cutting. But these have this little spring mechanism on them. And so after you cut, they spring back open. And that really... Like it kind of catches at the tip, but then it'll spring back open. It kind of assists your hand so you're not working so hard. So I think I'm going to try these. I think I'm going to try my spring-loaded ones, see if those work for me. Although, man, maybe I should use my pinking shears. So pinking shears have this zigzag blade, and so they cut a zigzag on the edge. And we did say that these un this fabric unravels pretty badly. And I don't really want mini strings everywhere. Hmm. So I'm down to these two. You know what? I think I talked myself into the pinking shears. So I'm going to try the pinking shears. If my hand gets too fatigued, then I'll move on over to these. All right. And those are all over there in my... <laughs> my bin of doom. And away we go. Oh, this is so awkward. I can already tell. I'm going to use... Oh, I'll do this one on screen. But I think the rest of them I'm going to do off camera. You could also use a um, a rotary cutter for this. And my rotary cutter is A, dull, and B, I'm not that good at it. I'm not that proficient with it. But you absolutely could use a rotary cutter. So what I just did there, I don't know if you saw me, but I kind of, I was feeling some resistance, so I stopped to make sure I wasn't cutting through two layers. And it was just this woven flower, right? Remember, it's got all those floats on the back, and so it's really thick there. But if you ever feel when you're cutting or sewing, if you ever feel something unusual like that, stop and check because, man, so many times I have accidentally cut through two layers of fabric or accidentally sewn through two layers of fabric. And there is nothing worse than that. Editing Sherry here. Uh, I'm editing this video that you're watching right now. And I just want to do a quick shout out to my new patron, Mike Kegley. Thank you so much for supporting me. I really appreciate it. Your help is doing more than you can know. I know I say that a lot, but it's absolutely true. 
Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm not working that much this semester. I only have one class. And it's really my patrons that are helping me get through this time. So, Mike, this one's for you. I appreciate you. The rest of my patrons are over here. You see them in a list. Um, everybody is the best. I really thank you guys. So if you want to support me and be a part of this great family and this wonderful group of people, the information is down below in the description box. Other than that, I'll talk to you later. Back to the video. Oh man, I don't know about these scissors, you guys. So these pinky shears do not like those floats. So let me try those other scissors. Let me try these other scissors for the other two sides and see if I like that better. I might just like the smoother edge better too. <clears throat> Oh, this is like butter. So you might ask, why do I have so many scissors? It's the right tool for the job. You know, like different scissors will cut different fabrics um, differently, for lack of a better way of putting it. You know, some, some will be, you know, really good for this fabric. Like these seem to be the scissors for this. Um... Some fabrics, you know, some scissors will be good, better for other fabrics, like satins or silks or what have you. Like, it just really depends. Okay, so there's my fabric. Now, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the second one out. I may cut this footage and just come back with a second one already cut. Depends on how smoothly this goes. All right, there are my squares. Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna do a little trick because sometimes when you sew a square, you can get these really weird kind of super pointy corners. And so I wanna pull the corners in a little bit so they're not quite so weird and just out there. So I'm going to grab my pencil. Okay. So you want to make a mark about a half an inch from the edge. And then you measure in about four inches from the edge. So four inches. And you angle in from this corner here to that four inch mark. And this will pull those corners in a little bit. I'm going to do that all over. Get rid of this. Corner pin. So I measure four inches from the edge. And then I angle my line. And that's it. And you do that on all four corners. And then once you get that done, you just trim that off. And I want to do these two layers at the same time so that they are the same size. This fabric is a little ornery to work with. Like I said, it wants to curl up. It's a little, it's super synthetic. It wants to curl up. It's super synthetic. 
Uh, so it's just not behaving nicely. So I want to do all four corners at the same time or do the two layers at the same time, I should say. And this is a little wonky here. Not quite even with each other. I was kind of avoiding that zigzag and I avoided it a little too much. There is all four corners, and they're kind of nipped in a little bit to make life a little easier. So now we pull the sewing machine back out and we get to sewing. I've got everything in place. I'm going to grab one layer of my fabric. I only want to start with one layer. All right, I'm going to start pattern side up. <clears throat> and I'm going to grab my piping. <clears throat> And I'm going to start about in the middle of the pillow here. And I'm just going to match, oops, I'm going to start about in the middle of this edge. And I'm going to um, start a little bit away from the edge so that I can finish this edge nicely. <clears throat> so a little bit away, about here, a couple inches, is where we will start. And we're going to work our way all the way around. And I'm actually going to move this bowl out of the way for right now. It's a little bit in my way. <clears throat> and we're going to sew very close to the edge of the piping this time. When I get close to my corner, I get close to my corner, I'm just going to clip that piping so that way it will turn that corner nice and neatly. So you just clip into that selvage. And when I get hmm, about a half an inch away, because <clears throat> I am excuse me, using a half an inch seam allowance. I'm going to leave the needle down, turn my fabric 90 degrees. And I'm just going to come around that corner and continue onwards. So again, I'm getting close to that corner. I'm going to clip that seam allowance into the corner. So that way I can cut that corner 
nice and cleanly. I'm getting close to the end here so I'm going to cut this off I'm gonna cut it a little long okay hey so this is actually the next day um, I tried to record this last time and it got lost so we're gonna do it again um, what we're doing is we're finishing off these ends and how do we close this off when we're done so um, I've got this end is open a little bit um, I've left this unsewn and I've got this raw edge and I'm gonna fold this raw edge this is the edge of my uh, piping I'm gonna fold this edge up so that I am encasing this raw edge in and I've cut this end so it's flush with my beginning here and then I'm going to wrap this over like so. And so that encases everything in. Just gonna make sure that I am all lined up. And then once I'm sure I'm all lined up, all ready to go, I'm just gonna sew this down. And I'm gonna take my stiletto and hold this down. If you don't have a stiletto, I highly recommend getting one. Um, this one I love. I got it on Amazon and it's just a great tool. So you're not getting your fingers in the way and potentially cutting your fingers off or anything like that. Let me double check here and make sure that I am copacetic. It appears so. So I'm just going to hold this down so I can get it under the presser foot. Finish it off. And that, friends, is how I get a nice clean finished edge. So this will trim. I make sure everything got caught in and it did. So that's how we get that nice clean join. All right. So now the next step is that we want to layer our other, right? We got this side done. All the piping is sewn on. So now I want to grab my other layer, which I have right next to me here. So I'm going to turn this so that I've got all the flowers facing up. And then here's my other layer and all flowers facing up. I'm going to place these together. And I'm actually going to turn this over so I got the right sides together. I'm going to turn this over. Oh, I'm getting caught on something here. On my zipper foot. There we go. I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to sew again on the side where I've already sewn my piping. That way I can follow the seam line and know that I'm encapsulating everything all together. And I'm going to leave a little bit of an opening so that I can put my pillow form in. So I'm just going to leave a little bit of an opening. So I'll start somewhere down here. Match up my edges. And you could pin this. I'm not a pinner. I don't pin if I don't have to. I do pin sometimes, as you've seen, but I don't pin if I don't have to. Again, that's just a habit I've gotten into 
from doing lots of production work. All right. And I know some of my sewing friends are going to say, make it more work for yourself. You can actually work faster if you pin. But for me, I just could not. All right, now I'm going to sew all the way around this. And again, I'm just going to follow this seam line. Get to the corners, the turn. And we're getting pretty close to where the recording left off last night. So yes, I cut a bunch of pillow covers. Ooh, that's my needle broken. All right, that will never not scare me. Let me find the shards. Okay, broken needle happens. Don't let it freak you out. I am going to search for the shards because I don't want those gumming up my works. Aha! There it is. It's on the thread still. Okay, good. So I'm going to cut. And I'm out of bobbin thread anyway. That's probably what pulled the needle. So I get to wind a bobbin. All right, so I'm going to wind this bobbin. I'm going to finish this pillow up. I'm going to let you get back to um, yesterday's recording. This is all I needed to add in. So take you back in time. The video keeps stopping on me and I don't know why. So we're going to get through this together, you and me. I think my phone's getting full, and so it's trying to not record it more than it needs to. Which is why I should really be using my camera, right? Not my phone. All right, next side. Again, you want to make sure your edges are lining up, more or less. Sew it as straight as you can. If it gets a little wonky on you because of the uh, bulk, don't worry about it. All right, we're on the final side. Woohoo! We are at the end point. So again, I'm going to leave a pretty good gap here. So I'm just going to sew it to right here. my pillow cover just like that now I'm going to come through and I'm going to trim this bulk off on the corners so I'm just going to snip those corners this is where I need that bowl back snip those corners And you could do this without the piping. If you did, if you decided you didn't want to go through all that rigmarole of the piping, you absolutely could just cut the two squares, um, kind of miter the corners like I showed you, and then just fill it with a pill form. Like, nobody says, who says you have to do it with a, you know, you could add fringe instead of 
uh, piping. You could add lace instead of piping. You could add a ruffle. The world's your oyster, right? It's all whatever you want to do. All right. So I'm going to turn this inside out. I'm going to grab my corner turner, which is way up here. I wouldn't recommend using scissors for this. I would recommend getting a corner turner or, or um, like a chopstick that you're not using, clean chopstick <laughs> that you're not using, right? Um, something that you're not going to poke through your fabric on to, to help turn your corners. Um, because I have piping on them, I probably won't need it. You can pull them out, pull the corners out with the piping, but just in case. Got my corner turner. And it's just a pokey thing. You can just poke into the corners to help them pop out. So if any of them fight me. But they shouldn't. I trimmed them nice. Y'all, isn't this exciting? This is the first project towards recovering my couch. Are you excited? I am excited. All right, here's our cover. Let's see if I can zoom out. All right. Here is our cover. I think I'm going to put my sewing machine away just so you can see what I'm doing. I put, I should have paused for that. I put my sewing machine away so you could see what I was, I'm doing a little bit better. But now we are going to put the pillow form into the pillow cover. I got a little chalk from where I had to extend. That's no big deal. I got a couple of threads here. That'll annoy me. Trim those threads. But this chalk, again, this will just wipe away. So I'm not going to sweat that too much. Just from handling it and stuff, this will it will wear off. So, this is just chalk. Here's my pillow form. And we're just going to cram it in here. It's not pretty, it's not cute, it just is what it is. You just gotta get that sucker in there. All right, I'm just gonna kind of help it get into its place and into its home. There we go. Get all the corners settled. Once again, if you've got like a chapstick or a skewer or something, it might be helpful to kind of smooth everything out. Smooth it all over. Smooth it out. Smooth it over. All right. And now I'm going to close this up. I'm just going to stitch it by hand, and you're going to get to watch me do it. So I'm going to, and you can kind of see where it wants to go. Right, you can see where that seam wants to be. So I'm just gonna give that a pin just to hold it in place. So I mentioned I have to get reoriented right to my studio every time I change over from one thing to another. So I'm like, do I have a sewing needle out? I guess I have this one, I have a hooked needle. I could use that. I may have no choice. Oh, here's a straight one. Doesn't really matter. You can use, I don't know if you can see these. You could use either a hook needle or a straight needle. Doesn't really matter. The hook needle is actually one of my book binding needles. But it would work for this. That's where I put my thread. Alright. Snip of thread. There we go. Just gonna tie a knot. 
I just kind of roll the thread on my finger and pull it. It's a French knot. You can tie any kind of knot you like. Snip it close. And I'm going to start over here. I actually think I want to... It's that little dimple I got going on there. Like now's the time to fix that. Not when it's sewn up and closed. Although you can always fluff. Fluff, fluff. Alright, that's better. Alright, so I'm going to start over here. going to. This is hard to do on camera. And I'm just going to pick up a little bit, a few threads on the fold here. And then a few threads on the pillow at the seam line. I'll zoom in a little bit. So again, there's this fold kind of establishing itself where the pillow wants to fold over. So I'm just kind of letting it go. And I'm going to pick up a few threads in that fold. And then I'm going to pick up a few threads on the seam line. do another knot. I'm going to kind of bury it in the seam here. But I'm going to do another French knot. So I'm just going to wrap this around once, twice, maybe three times. Pull that knot tight. Run the thread back through the fabric kind of bury the knot. Trim the thread flush. And there we go. There, my friends, is our seam. So there is... Zoom back out. So there is throw pillow number one. What do you think? And it will kind of even itself out over time and kind of smush into the corners a little better. But what do you think? You can do this, right? You can do this project. This is easy. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. All right. Just seven more to go. <laughs> Whose idea was this anyway? All right. Oh, maybe I should take the tags off those things. Makes a crinkly sound. But I got one throw pillow. Let me get on top of this. You can see a little better. I got one throw pillow down. Um, so the project has officially started. Um, we'll continue on. I'll make more throw pillows. Um, and then we'll get into the couch itself. So I'm pretty excited. And this is doing a good job of getting me warmed up. Like I said, my hands, I'm really feeling it. I'm not used to hand sewing anymore. Not that, I don't think there's a lot in this couch project. I think it's also going to be machine stuff. But, um, all right. That's it. I will see you in the next video. Bye. Am I ever going to remember to say like, subscribe, share, all that kind of good stuff? Probably not. But, hey, like, subscribe, share, all that kind of good stuff. All right. Now I'm really leaving. leaving. I mean it. Bye.